So the next presentation is called The Design of Zudu and Zoof. It's a paper by Johan Dame, Seth Hoffert, Gilles van Aarsch, and Ronnie van Keer, and uh, Gilles will give the talk. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. So indeed, I'm going to talk about Zudu and Zoof. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will give some motivation for this work. Then I will go through the, def the definition, sorry, of Zudu, then Zoof. And I will conclude with some words on how to, uh, how to use Zoof, how it can be used. Um, so first, motivation. The motivation starts from the very title of this conference. That we want to have fast software encryption, and presumably it needs to be secure, right? Um, usually we don't only need confidentiality, but authentication is also important. Sometimes we need authenticated encryption. And it needs to run fast on software, but yeah, hardware, this should not be, uh, should also look at. Um, but more generally, we would like to have something that runs a fine on a wide range of platforms because in many applications, you can have small devices that interact with the high-end server on the other end. So the same, the same algorithm would like, it, it would be nice if it can run fine on, on from the low end to the high end. Um, so one way to do this it would be to have some very small primitive that can be used in a mode or in construction where there is a lot of parallelism. So uh, the, the small device can just compute this primitive serially, but then as the platform grows, this uh, primitive can be computed several times in parallel as much as the platform allows it. Um, and so last year we presented something called Farfale. It's a construction based on permutations um, and it has a lot of parallelism. So let me go briefly um, through it. So it takes as input a secret key K. Um, it goes to, so there is a permutation F. It goes to the permutation to create a mask K. And then there is the, the input of this pseudo random function is divided into blocks. Uh, the mask is going to be XORed into these, these blocks but the mask is going to uh, evolve through a, a rolling function depicted in blue. And then all these, these resulting source will, be, will go through permutations and will be s the outputs will be summed. So you can see that all these calls to the permutation can be parallelized. Then the sum goes through another um, call to the permutation and then the output is again uh, going through a rolling function to be diversified and we saw the, the secret the secret mask, and this gives us um, output blocks. So again, the output can also be parallelized. So last year, we, we um, proposed an instance of Farfale using the Kachak permutation with 600 bits, and the result was called Kravate. Um, well, 1600 bits, that's a bit too much for low-end devices. So one option would be to go, for instance, to Kachak P400 but Kachak P400 uses 16-bit lanes, which is not very convenient on 32-bit platforms. So instead, our motivation was to try to have a permutation that fits nicely uh, in this setting. Um, and that's Zudu. So um, please meet the, <laughs> the mascot of Zudu. So it's a very robust animal. Um, so yeah, basically, um, Zudu takes a lot of inspiration from the Gimli permutation. So the Gimli permutation is defined on 12 words of 32 bits, so it fits nicely in the registers of typical ARM processors. Um, we, we reuse that idea, but the, the round function itself is more inspired from, from Ketchak components than, than anything else. And our main purpose is to plug this permutation into Farfale, as I just explained, and the result is called Zoof. Um, Another purpose is to plug it in the duplex construction. The result is called Zodiac. It's, it's available in the Zudo cookbook, but that's not the purpose of this talk. Okay, so um, I said that we have 12 words of 32 bits. So actually the state is organized. Oops, this was not. Uh, as four times three times 32 bits. This picture only shows eight bits in the Z direction. It should be 32 just for the picture. So that's the, the state. Um, the state consists of three planes of 128 bits and each plane consists of four lanes of 32 bits. 
Um, a colon is something that we are going to use a lot in the round function. So the round function consists of first theta, the linear mixing. Rho west, we will move the planes independently of each other. Then chi, um, the nonlinear, the S box, and rho east, again, we will move the planes independently of each other. And of course, they are round constants. Um, so first chi, so chi is really a three bit S box, just like the S box of Ketchak, except that it's on three bits instead of five. Um, so to compute one output bit, you take two other um, bits from the input, one of them is complemented, then you take the product of, of these two bits, and then you XOR the result to, to the third bit, and you do that for the three bits. Um, it's a degree in two function, but it's also an involution, and it has nice properties in terms of propagation of linear masks and, and differences, and yeah, it, it, it made the analysis much easier um, in terms of trays. I will give a few words on this. Um, Theta is the mixing layer, so it's um, um, a column parity mixer. So the idea is that we first compute the parity of all the columns here. Then there is um, some folding, so the idea is that two copies of the parity are XORed together with different um, translations. And then the result is XORed back into the state, and that's the result. Um, so if you have one, just one bit set to one, you can you can see the effect. So the, um, um, sorry, the the parity will be one bit, then the folding will be two bits, and then six bits will be XOR to the, to the state. Of course, if you have two bits set to one is the same column, the parity is zero, and there is no effect. That's the kernel. Um, rho east, we don't shift the plane at uh, y equals zero. We shift by one position in the z direction the plane at y equals one, and at y equal, equals two. We shift by two positions, two positions along x and eight positions along z. And then similarly, rho west, um, one shift by x on the plane y equals one, and 11 shifts uh, along z in the plane y equals two. So these planes, they move um, independently of, of each other, so all the structures on the columns will be destroyed for the next round. So that's the pseudocode of, of Zudu. So first theta, computing the parity, having the two copies, and then XORing them back. Rho west, shifting the two planes. Yota, round constants. Uh, chi, computing the, the products and then XORing them back. And then Rho west, moving the two, uh, the two planes. Okay, so in terms of cryptographic properties, uh, clearly the, the security of anything based on, on Zudu would be limited by, by differential cryptanalysis, so the maximum probability um, of a differential from delta A to delta B. But finding this maximum uh, differential is hard to determine. Um, instead, we look, we approximate this by the, max, the maximum probability of a, a differential trail. Differential trail is a trail that it, it's a differential where each difference, each intermediate difference is specified. And similarly to the design of, of Ketchak, we have something called weak alignment and that makes this approximation um, plausible at least. Okay, so we, instead of talking about differential probabilities, we talk about weights, which is the negative logarithm of the differential probability. And we looked at Zudu and tried to have bounds on these, these trails using the techniques presented um, two years ago. Um, so what we started with the, uh, all the trails up to, of three rounds up to weight 50, and there we could find one with weight 36. So that gives us uh, a bound of 36 for three rounds. Then we could extend these to, to six rounds. I mean, we could not extend them to six rounds. We could have, um, we, by showing that we cannot extend them to six rounds, we have an argument that says that any trail on six rounds should have at least weight of 104. And then for four rounds and five rounds, we also did the exercise that's updated compared to the paper. So for four rounds, um, we could prove the bound of 74, and we found um, an instance of 80. So we don't know if this 80 is the best or not. We just have an example. For five rounds, we didn't have an example, but we could prove that the weight is at least 90. And the same goes for linear. Differential and linear uh, trails have the same, the same bounds um, on purpose, by, by design. We chose the, the rotation constants such that this situation is, is like this. 
Um, so the diffusion is pretty good in terms of the strict avalanche criteria. We need 3.5, three and a half rounds in the forward direction to have full diffusion. And in the backward direction, the inverse of theta is, is um, heavier, and then we just need two rounds. Um, I think that's it for, for Zoodoo. Um, so Zoof is just taking Farfale, plugging in Zoof in those Fs there, all, all the Fs. We also, so yeah, Zoodoo is, yeah, is a family of permutations parameterized by the number of rounds. So we use six rounds of Zoodoo um, in, in Zoof. We also need to define the rolling function. So for the, um, on, on the compression side, the rolling function is linear, operating on a full state. And on the expansion side, it's nonlinear and also operating on a full state. We make a security claim of 128 bits of, of security. Um, I think it's both data and, and time. I don't remember exactly. And we also make a, a post-quantum claim. If someone has access to a quantum computer, then, then the security is 2 to the 96. We don't make a claim for someone who would implement this on a quantum computer. That's a different story. Um, yeah, at, so I said our goal was to have some good performance on a wide range of, of platforms, so let me give you some, some numbers. So let's start with the Cortex, uh, M, the ARM Cortex M0. So um, for long inputs, we can reach 26 cycles per byte, and long outputs, uh, similarly 25 rounds per byte, and then as a comparison, the AES128 in counter mode is about five times slower on that platform. Um, on Cortex M3, which is a bit bigger, we can reach between eight and nine cycles per byte for long inputs and long outputs, compared to something of about four times slower for the AES. Then on more the high end, so that's um, on the Skylate processor, we use the AVX2 instruction set, which allows us to have eight instances of Zoodoo compute in parallel using 256 bit registers. And there we are slightly slower than than, than AS, we're below one cycles per byte, but slightly uh, slower than, than the S, but still using something that is a yeah, general, um, general purpose instruction set. Um, on the Skylake X, so the, the more recent processor, they have AVX 512 instruction set. To there we can compute 16 instances of Zoodoo in parallel. And, and there we, we again are below one cycles per byte and we are even faster than, 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 than the AES using uh, hardware AES instructions, of course. Um, yes. So let me conclude this presentation by now assuming we have uh, Zoof, what can we do with it? Um, and actually, Farfale implements something that we call a deck function. So a deck function is not a new construction I'm going to define, just a way to capture the that kind of, the kind of functionality that Farfale implements, or Zoof implements. So DEC stands for doubly extendable cryptographic keyed function. And so it's this FX here, it takes as input a sequence of strings, so from X1 to XM, and it's going to produce some output bits like a PRF, but potentially an infinite uh, number of output bits. So now I'm going to explain a little bit the, the conventions when we XOR a string of a given length to another string of another length, the result is the length of the smaller of the two strings. So I have an infinite, potentially infinite number of bits, of output bits here, but I'm XORing that to zero to the n, so I effectively I'm just taking n bits of output from this deck function. Then this shift by Q means I'm skipping the first Q bits, so what I'm doing here is just taking n bits from this deck function starting from the offset Q, so from offset Q to offset Q plus N minus one. Um, so it's doubly extendable, meaning that it um, has some incrementality properties. First on the input, if you compute FK of X, and then you save some state, and you want to compute F of Y after X, then the, the cost of computing this, this new, making this new evaluation does not depend on X, it only depends on the le length of Y. Um, and clearly the Farfale um, construction al allows for this. And similarly on, on the output, so it's also extendable on the output, you can request first a number of bits, then more bits and more bits. And every time you ask for more bits, you don't need to start from the beginning, you just pay a cost that is 
proportional to the number of bits you ask for incrementally. So having a deck function and using this, this idea of having a deck function, you can build some modes. And I'm going just to give one mode as an example. We call this mode deck sane. For, uh, so it's a session-based authentic and encryption mode, a session and non-spaced. So first, session, because we can, it's, um, it's a stateful object, and we can ask authenticated encryption of messages. And every time uh, the tag authenticates not only the current message, but all the messages, the sequence of all the messages that have been received so far. That's, that, that's the session. So at initialization, it takes a nonce. Then we are going to use some bit E that is just one bit that is going to toggle from zero to one every time we switch from one message to the other. Um, history is going to capture um, the input of my deck function. So it starts with just end the nonce. And we create a tag an optional tag on just the session setup that just authenticates the nonce. Then if a message comes in, so it contains associate data A and plain text B, we start by creating some um, key stream here with the, our deck function. So now we, have, we still have only the nonce. We skip the first T bits because we use them for the tag here, and we sort that to the plain text B, and that gives us the cipher text. Then we update the history by adding the associate data and zero to recognize it, E to recognize the current message. Same for the ciphertext and one. And we produce a tag on the current version of the history. And we, we flip the bit for the next um, iteration. The next iteration is going to start with this, with the same history, just skipping the first T bits because they were produced as a tag in the, for the previous message. And it, it goes on like this, and E toggles from zero to one every time. If we instantiate Dexane with Zoof, we, the result is yeah, Zoof Sane. Um, we also propose a mode called Dex Sanse, which is basically it has the same functionality, but there is no the nonce is constructed in an SIV uh, kind of mode, so um, the SIV is constructed from from the message. The, sorry, the nonce is created using SIV from the message. And then um, deck WBC is a wide block cipher, so it provides authenticated encryption um, with minimal expansion. And all this is available in, in, the, ex in the extended Kitschak code package. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Okay, I have one small question. Um, so you mostly introduce it in the context of Farfalle, but is, should I see Zudu as a standalone permutation or is it really designed for Farfalle? Um, no, you can use it for other purposes. It, for instance, if you take 12 rounds and it's sufficient to be plugged in the sponge or duplex construction, it's strong enough for that. Okay. So no other questions. Let's uh, thank you again. <laughs>